Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today we're going to do a little bit of a mini update into NEO stock which is probably I would say the hottest stock on the stock market right now. It's going up quite a lot, uh, everyone's talking about it. I covered the stock probably a few months ago on the channel but I feel like it's worth an update on what's going on with the company and also quite a few of you guys have been in the comment section and asking for a little bit of an update on this one so I will do that for you guys today you know if there's ever such a demand on a company that you guys want me to do I will do that company so um, you know there's nothing wrong with posting down a couple of comments in the video like can you go check this stock out Jacob I will do it if there's enough likes on it um, I know Golden Nugget was a popular one the other day I will try to get around to that one but yeah, we'll talk about NEO today, one of the hottest stocks out there on the stock market right now. And on paper, this is a company that I should really love because I'm a big fan of EV companies. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was previously a early investor into Tesla and also I'm a big fan of Chinese companies. So, um, you know, something like Alibaba, um, JD.com, two companies that have done really well for me over like the last kind of few years. So um, it's a sector that I am very eager to get into because like I say, I'm a big fan of the EV sector, growing sector. Big fan of the Chinese economy, it's a very fast growing economy which will help a lot of stocks gain very quickly. So um, yeah, on paper this is a, a fantastic stock for someone like me. Um, so we'll take a look at this one. So smash the like button guys, if you are new around here, make sure you subscribe and we'll take a look. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm actually gonna break this coming down to some positives and some negatives. It's a long time since I've like used the whiteboard as much as this, um, but we'll break down with what's going on with the company in general. So we'll start off with probably one of the biggest negatives at the moment, which is the stock price. The stock price is very expensive on this one. When you look at what the stock price has gone up over like the last few days, it's definitely been quite an unhealthy move really for NEO. Uh, stocks shouldn't really just go up in a straight line. They will come back at some point. And when you look at the amount of gains that NEO has had over the last few days, it's probably a little bit too much. So from a stock price, or well, on the stock chart, you can see it's probably overextended. One of the other key things that I like to look at as well with NEO is the current market cap size. And we look at the market cap and it's trading at about a 55 billion market cap, which is crazy because when we look at the revenue, um, it's nowhere near that. Um, so yeah, to have a market cap size of 55 billion probably is a little bit too much. And also when we look at the run, it's probably a little bit of an unhealthy run. You know, the chart has steadily gone up, then all of a sudden, sudden we've just gone bang straight up. And we've, you know, since like the 26th of October, we've gained like 60% on it. So from a stock market chart point of view and a valuation of 50 billion, I'd say it's probably a little bit too much right now. Um, so I would say that definitely in the short term, it's a bit overvalued and it's probably due a little bit of a pullback right now. So I'm gonna put the stock price on a little bit of a negative side, but the next thing is the industry. So let's think about the industry. Well, at the moment, it's an EV company in China. China's growing huge as a market, as an economy. EVs are gonna be massive over the next few years. So the market that it's in is definitely something that's only gonna benefit China. And also when we think about China and we think about NEO, at the moment, NEO is a Chinese car maker. Now, Tesla are doing quite well over there, and NEO is still quite far off the sales that Tesla are doing in China. Nevertheless, when you look at the sales growth, absolutely phenomenal from NEO. They are growing absolutely huge, and if they could carry on growing at this sort of rate, it's only gonna do wonders for them, and they're gonna be a major player in China. And let's not forget, Tesla cannot dominate the whole EV market in China and in the world. There's gonna to have to be other competitors that do come in here. Neo could potentially be one of them. So the industry it's growing in, going into is a fantastic industry. It's gonna do really well for Neo, and it is gonna take some of that market share. And let's not forget, Tesla is an American company. Neo is a Chinese company. Now in China, I can tell you right now, they do not want a, a American company to be dominating that kind of industry. They want to support Neo. Neo is a Chinese company. They want a Chinese company to be the successful one. And that's what we saw a few months ago. You know, Neo was on the verge of going bankrupt. You know, the stock was down at like two, three, four dollars. And if you bought it that sort of range, I'm sure you're up absolutely huge. So congratulations for that. But let's not forget this, this company was very much on the verge of bankruptcy only a few months ago and all of a sudden you know it's got some money and the shots the stocks totally turned around it shot up so let's not you know patch over that let's not just skip that part you know this company was in a bad place um at the start of the year and it has turned it around but it is a positive because when we look at neo we can see they can access a lot of funding we could also see that the chinese government are willing to support neo and they want neo to be the successful company so from the industry point of view and where it is econ in the economy, we can see that China do want a successful EV maker. So 
it is going to be very much helped by the Chinese government. So I think that's a very good positive out there for Neo. And I think that kind of puts us on the next point, which is kind of growth right now. Now, I think when you look at the growth industry and what Neo is doing, they are scaling up really well. And if they carry on scaling up really well and get more and more deliveries, the deliveries have been phenomenal this year. And I think that's really why what's caused the, shop, the stock price to shoot up is people are impressed by them deliveries. You know, people looking going, they are really starting to ramp up what's going on here. And you look at the plans going forward as well. You know, Neo are just, you know, looking at kind of China. Okay, we're doing well here. And then they're eyeing up, you know, Europe in the next year. Now, that's kind of a key thing for me because Europe for EV cars is going to be a big, massive market. And Tesla are doing okay, but they're nowhere near like what they are scaled up in, you know, towards, uh, you know, China in the US. You know, there's no Gigafactory here yet. There's one on the way in Berlin, but probably for Europe, they're probably going to need some more than that. That's why we know they'll iron up a UK gigafactory. Neo could come in here because Tesla is quite early days. If Neo can get a big, massive share of the European market, we're talking about a company here that dominates China to talk about a company that's dominating China and Europe. And with that sort of domination comes a different sort of story for this company. We could talk about a company that probably deserves something like if they can dominate China, you know, in a few years time, we would talk about a company that's probably, you know, 100 billion market cap, uh, maybe 200 billion market cap. But when we talk about if Neo can dominate Europe and China, then we start talking about a company that in five years time could be a, at 800 billion market cap so the levels here on how important it is for neo to get into europe are massive and at the moment when you look at the story that's going on in neo and the growth you can only say that it is it is on the right track granted for me it's still very early days you know when you look at the delivery numbers towards tesla you know they're nowhere near the scale of tesla even in china but when you look at what's coming ahead if they can get to that point where they dominate china and europe this stock is uh, it's going to do really well. So you kind of, there's nothing concrete yet, but where it's looking to go could be very positive for the company. And with that growth in mind, we're going to come to one negative, which is going to be the profitability and the balance sheet. And this is probably the one thing that has stopped me from really investing in NEO over the last kind of couple of months is that profit and balance sheet. Now, NEO is very early days and because it's early days, it's going through a lot of cash um, to expand, it has to. Any normal company that wants to become a worldwide dominating company has to be a little bit of a cash burner. You know, you look at your likes like Amazon, something like a Tesla now, you know, them sort of companies struggle for profit for quite a few years, but it's because they're scaled up. And when they're scaled up, then they you know, they got the rewards later on. You know, Tesla's just started that. You look at something like an Amazon, it's been there for a while now, and look how quickly that profitability is scaling up. So you do, there's some point of view where, you know, to scale up, you do need to be unprofitable for a while. But the thing is, it's very unprofitable. You know, we're burning through quite a few, uh, a few dollars every kind of couple of quarters at the moment, which in, is burning through the balance sheet. And, you know, that's one reason why Neo was struggling at the early in the, in the year is because it was just burning through so much cash and then it needed to raise cash because they're not on its balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet as well, very ugly for me. Um, I would like the balance sheet to be a little bit stronger than what it is right now. And because of the profit, the balance sheet, burning through cash, it might need to have more share raises, especially if it wants to go to something like a, a to Europe and dominate Europe and build its charging platform that it currently has. You know, it needs more and more money. If it needs more and more money, what's it going to do? Is the debt level going to rise? Is the, you know, they're going to start dilute, diluting shareholders? So for me, because of how early it is on and how much more money it needs and when you look at the profitability and balance sheet, it's just a little bit too much for me at the moment. So this was the big reason why I never bought uh, Neo a few months ago. It's still very, very early and it still needs to work on it and it still will have a few problems going on. For me, this is the one thing that stops me getting into this company. I think it's about 12 months off from where I need to see this company. And if 12 months time, it is at the right valuation, which is probably lower than what it is right now. And this is starting to improve. It has a lot more cash on that balance sheet. The profitability is getting closer and closer. You know, we've seen it move in the right direction. It's just not moved enough for me right now. I need to see it, you know, not burning through the billions. It needs to be burning through the millions. And that's where I need to see it move. So I think maybe in 12 months time, this could be a better situation. And then I might be able to, maybe invest in this one myself if it's the right valuation but 
that is the one thing that stops me right now with Neo. And the next thing is the backers. Now I don't know if backers is even a word, but we're putting it down there. So when we look at the backers, like say, you know, the one thing I have problems with is that balance sheet, but you've got to say there is really big backers here in this company. You know, you look at the what the government have been able to do with the amount of firms that have come in to support them. You also look, and the one key thing for me is that when I look at a Chinese company, I either like to see that Alibaba holds a stake in them, or I like to see Tencent hold a stake in them. If they have a stake by them too, I'm like, these. if they like them, I like them. And Tencent holds a big stake in to Neo. And that's a big thing for me because Tencent are massive giants and they will, if they need more cash, what Tencent will do is we'll give you a cash injection, we'll pick up some shares as well while we're at it. So because Tencent are interested in them and because the story is very successful at the moment, I'm sure Tencent will stick with them through the hard days and then if they think they're really successful, I'll see Tencent probably taking the stake up to 15, 20, maybe 30% over like the next five years. Um, so yeah, having them sort of backers is really important, which it does do. And that's what kind of, you know, makes me a little bit more confident in this scenario where I can say, you know, 12 months time. If it wasn't for someone like a Tencent there, I'd probably say that it's probably 24 months. So because of them having really good backers, that makes me more confident into the company. The next thing is the charging. Now I couldn't decide if this deserved to be a negative or a positive, but they certainly do it a different way to everyone else. So for charging in Neo, what you have to do is you go to one of their charging stations, which by the way, I only found out that them charging stations are actually portable. So if they're not in a you, like a location where they're being used, Neo can actually pick them up and move them somewhere else, which I thought was a really cool idea. Uh, and also, you know, they're, they're easy to get to A to B or what have you. But Neo have really been ramping up the charging stations, which they really need to do because they do battery swaps, which is very different from someone like a Tesla because with Tesla, you know, you go to a charge station or you have a charge station at your house, you know, you charge it up, you know, it takes about 30 minutes to get half your battery. Where it's somewhere like Neo, you go to a charging station, you park in the charging station, they take the battery out of the, ca the car, they put a new battery in, and then off you go, which I do like the idea of. I like that it's very quick, you're fully charged, three minutes. You also don't have you know, the battery wear and tear. Um, and I know that what Neo are looking to do is they're actually looking not to supply batteries with the cars and then you just pay like a rental fee for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's something that, what is kind of crazy is like in China, it's been really popular. And a lot of people get Neo cars because of the battery swapping and the, you know the, they don't have the facilities at home to use the battery swaps which does work and i could see that actually working in the uk and in other places in europe you know i think how many people would be able to get like uh you know as to a supercharging station or you know have that charging ability at home um and also the thing is you know you talk about it takes half an hour to get you know your battery charged to half where something with neo you know it takes like three four minutes so it's like going to the petrol station, you know, you pull up, you go in, uh, you go pay for it, you might go in and get a, you know, a drink or something and then you pay and then you come out when your car's done and you swap your battery over. And I could see that really working. The argument is, is that with Tesla, is that, you know, you go, it charges up and, you, you know, you can do it at home and everything like that. But they argue that their charging stations will get quicker and quicker, which I can understand. But then you look at Neo and they say, well, you don't have to worry about your batteries anymore. And like I said, I'm very undecided whether I like Neo's charging you know, situation more than Tesla. I can understand it. When I'm thinking about Europe, you know, which one would work more in Europe? I'm still not sure on that. So I don't know it. I don't know how well it's going to be taken. You know, that's the big thing. Um, but also the thing is, if they are looking into Europe, then they have to scale up this charging system which is then obviously another expense. So like I say, I've put it in the negative for now, but you could easily argue that this could be a positive. Um, so yeah, that's something to bear in mind as well. I want you guys as well in the comment section, you guys put if you think their charging system is a good thing or a bad thing. I'd be really interested to hear. Next up is the Neo model. So Neo have got a lot of models out there and the models have been very successful and are definitely giving Tesla a run for the money. And to have this many models already scaled up is fantastic. It gives them a variety of products to sell. And you know, they take years of developing to get to that point and 
Neo have plenty of them, and like I say, they are doing really well. So that gives it an advantage that it's already got a lot of these models out here, and it's going to carry on bringing these models out. When you compare it to a lot of other EVs out there, even one that I own, like Lost Town Motors, it's got one model. It's got its pickup truck, which granted is a very good pickup truck, but when you have so many different sectors covered, you know, your, your small cars, to your medium cars, to your 4x4 cars, Neo's got it which is very good so it can go head to head with something like Tesla so because it's so far developed now and developing so many models and producing so many models I think that's really good and that gives it its little edge that it has over you know some other makers out there I know Xpeng I think it is is the other one that's coming up in China right now and if you want another video on that one maybe I could do that one I know they're backed by Alibaba I believe and um, so yeah maybe that's another one that I can cover on the channel but um, when you look at the models of NEO, definitely gives it a big advantage right now. So overall, that's kind of like my breakdown of NEO stock. So there's a, there's, there's a lot going on in here. And like I say, you, you've got a case that it's going to do really well. And you have a case that maybe there's still a few things to iron out here. I definitely like where the company's going. And in general, I like the vision of the company. And I could see myself owning this stock in a few years time. When you look at the industry, the growth, the backers that are in this company, you can see it being a very successful Chinese uh, EV maker and hopefully it can go and dominate you know, Europe. And I see it doing really well. I like what's going on. But like I say, there's still a few little red flags here that for me, I can't invest in it right now. And I think the stock price would have to change for me to buy in a few years time. So I think personally for me, um, 50 billion market cap valuation is a bit too much for a company at this sort of stage. You know, it's still, you know, nothing to the scale of even Tesla in China. So I'd have to say the stock price would need to come down a little bit for me. Something in the $20 range I would appreciate and that would be pretty good. But this is the big thing for me. Profit, how far it's off profit, it needs to move closer to being profitable. It doesn't have to be profitable. I just have to see that they can get that losses down while still scaling. And the balance sheet, I still think for them to scale up, I mean, they don't even they don't even make their own cars, which I could kind of put down here as a negative. But to get you know the charging and everything like that, you know you, you can argue that either way. But I mean, overall, this is the big thing that does it for me. If I could see Neo develop a few a little bit more, and it gets closer, I'm happy, and the balance sheet gets better, and at, at the right time, if the stock price is that right price, I mean, it's just gone up a bit too much at the moment, which is a bit unhealthy, but. I think in 12 months time I could see myself buying this company, it just needs to move in the right direction a little bit more, scale up its production a little bit more. So yeah, that's where I'm at with this company. Overall, where I'm, what would I say in, I think because a few people have shares in the company, I would say that I would not buy at this valuation. Like I say, I'd say $20 range is a lot better for this company, I'd be a lot more happy there in this company, but I mean I wouldn't blame you for buying it, like for me. For my, it's just my personal situation. I don't like getting into companies that are so, you know, debt heavy and so far off profit. It's just not what I like to do. Um, so for, it's just my situation that I don't like it at where it is right now. But for some of you guys, you might be fine with that. So you might want to take a jump on this one. But I definitely say that it's probably worth a little bit of a pullback from where it is right now. Um, that's what I would say. And for you guys that are maybe early shareholders that are in, you know, like four, six, eight dollars, maybe even like twelve dollars, fourteen dollars. I'd say that's a very good share price, and you know, it might never get down back to them prices. So give yourself a pat on the back, you've done really well. I would say that I would definitely not sell all your position in it, even though it's probably overvalued, just because that realistically you might not get that valuation again. Um so yeah, I would say that it's definitely worth holding them shares that if you do have them. I would say that there would be nothing wrong with taking profit either, if that's what you're thinking. There's nothing wrong with selling, you know, 10, 20% of your position that you do have. Um, it would free up some cash and then like say, if it do, does dip from, you know, $40 down to $20, you could then go buy the company at cheaper prices or something like that. It, it's down to what you think, you know? Um, so yeah, overall I would say that I do like this company, I like where it's going, it's just probably 12 months too early for me and like I say I'll come back to this one in 12 months time and see where it's at price wise and how this has gone on and then I might buy it. So that's where I'm at with Neo at the moment so I, I thought I'd update you with that because I know a few guys were interested so uh, I hope you enjoyed it, smash the like button if you uh, did and if you are new around here and you made it to the other side, subscribe that would be amazing and I'll see you in the next video.